To handle. Today's show is hot stuff, or at least today's show is about hot stuff. The hot stuff that comes out of a volcano. We'll be looking at the kinds of stuff volcanoes spit out. And how much. It can be a lot. The word for that stuff is ejecta. Hey, that makes sense. Ejecta is the hot stuff that is ejected from a volcano. In Hawaii, the Mauna Loa volcano ejects lava. Mauna Loa has been active for years and has built up a lot of new land, as Robin found out. We are landing on Mauna Loa, the biggest active volcano in the world. This is new lava, Robin. It's probably not more than a day old, and it's pretty shelly. <gasps> wow. I can walk on this. I'm not going to fall in. Yep. Just unstable. You'll be fine. It's not hot enough to burn you. <laughs> this stuff is more solid. That's Tina Neal, a geologist at the U.S. That's Geological cool. Survey's no, Hawaiian Volcano dense. Observatory. This is what we want. This is a perfect situation right here. Wow! It's an actively moving pohoihoi toe, and that's exactly what we need to sample and take temperatures in. This heat is unbelievable. Wait till you get a little closer. Take a sample first in case it freezes. Mm -hmm. Like I told you before, we're gonna approach it. I don't even think I need the shield for this. I'm gonna scoop it with my hammer, place it in the can, and you're gonna pour water on it. Okay. So just be ready with the top off. Do I have to keep these gloves on? You might wanna keep them on, because if you fall, this stuff will burn you. This stuff is probably a lot cooler than what's coming directly out of the vent because it's traveled about a half a mile and it's lost some of its heat. It's also lost a lot of its gas. You see it's moving very sluggishly. Mm -hmm. So you mean to tell me it gets hotter than this? Oh yeah, near the vent it's a lot hotter because this has formed a crust. It's, the black you see there is a crust. Uh -huh. And it's because it's chilling as it meets the air. All right, ready, Robin? Ready. <gasps> see, as I... Get the uh, probe. Okay. It's a good way to lose a hammer. Let's try it again. I think okay. I'm going to use a shield. Yeah, because it's it's really hot. And your face is <laughs> real red. As soon as I expose the red interior, there's a lot more heat. Okay. I can feel it. Okay, you might want to stay behind me. Taking lava samples is important because it tells the scientists from how deep the lava is coming and what it's made of. It's like taffy. Okay, some water. Ha! Go for it. Hit it hard to break that crust. All right, you've got milk. Good job. <laughs> you got it. There Go it for is. some more. Go for some more. All right, that's a good sample. Let's back off. Eighteen days ago, these fire fountains have built a long spatter rampart 
material falls out of the fountains and just builds up on either side of the fissure. How long has this been going on? Well, Mauna Loa Volcano is probably several hundred thousand years old. And it's been doing this on and off, uh, maybe on the order of every five years, producing a big lava flow, and it's grown 13,000 feet in height above sea level. And if you take into account the height above the ocean bottom, it's well over 30,000 feet in height. That makes Mauna Loa the largest active volcano in the world. So each time it erupts, the mountain just gets bigger and bigger. That's, That's right. Higher That's right. Higher. It doesn't necessarily build any height at the summit, but it also grows in width. This eruption has occurred low down on the flanks, and it's making the volcano broader. Is that because of the lava that flows all the way down or something? Right. This flow that was produced in the early days of this eruption went about 15 miles down that coast. So all that that we see is like new earth. It's new ground. That's right. It's just pouring out at the rate of many hundred thousands of cubic yards a minute. And it was all created by the lava? By this eruption, yeah. New Earth in the making, a rare sight to us, but one of our planet's most common processes. Volcanoes make new land. They can eject enough stuff to create mountains or fill in valleys. In just two months, Mauna Loa ejected 220 million cubic meters of lava. 220 million cubic meters? That's a lot of cubic meters. To give you an idea of just how much that is, here's one meter. And here's a box. And this box measures one meter by one meter by one meter. In other words, this cube holds one cubic meter of stuff. And we're going to fill it with popcorn. Take a guess. How much popcorn will fill a cubic meter? I don't know. 20 batches? I'll guess 45, maybe 50. The first batch is ready. This might take longer than we thought. And this is just one cubic meter. Imagine 220 million of these boxes full of lava. But another volcano, Mount St. Helens, ejected almost five times as much as Mauna Loa, a billion cubic meters of stuff. The Mount St. Helens ejecta wasn't lava. It was mostly hot ash. While we're popping popcorn, Robin's going to take a look at Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens erupted on May 18, 1980. The top of the mountain exploded, leaving this huge crater. We landed in the very center of an active living volcano. My guide, Holly Martinson, a scientist with the U.S. Geological Survey, here to see life fighting back from the ashes. Remember, before May 18th, the very peak of the mountain was a couple thousand feet above where we are now. And all this was solid. All this was solid and was excavated out during the eruption. Uh -huh. You can see it's really unstable in here. This is a bunch of landslide material and debris. See that over there? It's got a big 
a landslide going over here off the crater wall. Those are rocks falling off the top of the mountain. Right. See, there's a very fine line of safety here in the crater. If you walk too close to the dome, you stand a chance of getting hit by a rock coming off the dome. If you walk too close to the crater wall, you stand a chance of getting hit by the constant stream of rocks that's coming down off there. It's a very unstable landscape. Well, isn't it dangerous for us to be here right now? Well, uh, yes, it is. That's why most people are discouraged from coming up here. Very dangerous to be up here. And maybe we should think about going to a spot that's not so close to landslide. So should we move back a little bit? Move back a little okay, bit. Okay, let's move back. <laughs> Two miles from the summit, a lunar landscape. Right now, we're standing on a deposit that we refer to as the debris avalanche deposit. What this material is, is the material that on May 18th, when the volcano erupted, came down into the valley of the Tula River. It was a landslide. The material we're walking on now is the material that used to make up the inside of the mountain, the solid rock at one point. So all this was inside the mountain at one time. Right. In fact, right now, we're standing on over 100 feet of it. A landscape almost completely transformed from a single eruption. Three hundred and thirty-three. I couldn't pop another piece of popcorn. I'm pooped. I never thought it would take 333 batches to fill up this box. 334, if you count the one we ate. Oh, that's right. I forget why we did this. You show how much stuff it takes to fill one cubic meter. Oh, yeah. And Mount St. Helens ejected a billion boxes like this full of hot ash? One billion? A billion cubic meter boxes would go around the world. Not once, not twice, but 20 times. Okay, I sort of knew that volcanoes could make new land, but this proves it to me. That's a lot of stuff that comes out of the earth. And as it cools and settles, it changes the face of the land. <laughs> Volcanoes change the earth. Some volcanoes erupt lava. Some erupt hot ash. Millions of cubic meters of stuff can come from a single volcanic eruption. All this ejecta makes new land. Three to one classroom contact is a production of the Children's Television Workshop.